Welcome to the Loaded Up Podcast. My name is Howard Cam, and today let's talk about something that most students don't like and most parents don't like distance learning. And today I'm joined with two students, Piper Chin and Will Lopez. Hi, Piper. Hi, Will. Hi, Mr. Cam. Hey, Mr. Cam. What's going on? How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Not bad. How are you, Will? I'm also doing great. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have you guys here. This is the first time we've recorded together. No, Piper, I no, recorded with you. Yeah, back when we just were starting out this class. Yeah, but this is the first time I've recorded with Will. That's true. This is the first time I'm on the show. And Will runs a podcast called? Will Wonders. Will Wonders. If you haven't heard of Will Wonders, it's, it's pretty good. It's an interesting take on a lot of good topics. And normally you don't hear a podcast that's really good with only one person. But Will's, Will, your podcast is really good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. And then Piper, you also run a podcast too. Yeah, I run a podcast called Judgment Time with three of my friends who, two of my friends, I'm the third, who also do this class. And what do you guys talk about? Uh, we talk about books and we, we talk about media. So we talk about books and movies and podcasts. And we, we kind of recount what happened in it and then talk about how that kind of applies to our life. That's good. Not a lot of kids actually read. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of reading, we do you remember distance learning? I mean, you guys were aware of distance learning. Oh, yes. That was like a couple of years ago. We had this distance learning thing. And if anybody remembers, it was a lot of COVID. And because of COVID, we had a lot of uh, times where we had to separate. We couldn't, we couldn't see each other. You weren't allowed to be in the classroom. Yeah, it was, t- it was really isolating. So why don't we talk about the good and the bad of distance learning today? All right. So I think for good, let's start us off. Uh, was there a lot of willingness of students and families willing to do distance learning? I, I think so. I think so, too. I think it was a creative a solution that we came up with pretty quickly to try and figure out how we could do school during a pandemic. I think the students who live very far away from school or who aren't very social in school, I think it was a dream for them. I think they really liked it and appreciated it. But as for the other hand, for the students who lived close or they liked socializing, you know, I don't think they felt very good about that. Yeah, not isn't that nice waking up and then the first thing you do is just roll 10 feet to your left or to your right and then now you're on your computer? It was awesome. I have a 45-minute <laughs> commute to school. I loved getting to sleep for those 45 minutes. I did live close, but I still really like not having to get out and go up get to school. Yeah, I live farther away and I hated, you know, I don't hate my commute. I mean, I kind of hate my commute. <laughs> I hate my commute when there's traffic, like no one knows how to drive and they get into an accident. I know, right? And so when the commute's, when the commute's super long, like that was terrible. But over distance learning, I think the greatest part about having distance learning was this no commute whatsoever. And it was great. Like I could just get up, put on a Aloha shirt, and then turn on my camera, get my lesson ready, and then I was good to go. And the benefit, why, why I liked it, was I was already digital on all my lessons. So I didn't have like papers or handouts, you know? Why don't we talk about like, I mean, what about the ability to learn at one's own pace? I think. So my, my year that was COVID was freshman year. And I think for, for online learning, I think it was awesome in a little bit because it kind of forced you to learn how to be an independent learner. Yeah. It was a little hard starting that as a freshman, but it developed your skills of being like, if I want to learn how to do this, I have to learn how to do this on my own. Because we were only going to class for like six hours a week, I think. It was a jacked up schedule. Yeah. It wasn't a it wasn't a full schedule. I'm pretty sure that wasn't like legal. I don't sense. think so. Like students are required to have a certain amount of hours of, of education. Yeah. How about you, Will? Like, did you like learning at your own pace? Uh, well, distance learning for me, it was kind of an up and down thing. In the beginning, I really liked it. And I got all my work done because we had a whole different website that tracked like your lesson plans and what homework you had. And at first I was on top of it. But after like couple months it was just uh, and then I just I fell behind and it was mostly my fault but overall I think it was a decent experience yeah because it was like tedious crap oh yeah all of it what website was that I don't remember the website name but it had all the Nixon gimmicks like ed puzzles or Uh, yeah all that some kind of dashboard yes some kind of dashboard no I hated that because every time a classroom would have to put new things and then like you know, but, but I think for students and for, for you learning at your own pace, it was good for me to like kind of pace things out too, right? We could see um, how you're progressing instantly. Data is automatic when you submit questions and quizzes. What about, did you learn any like new, any new tech skills? Uh, I was already pretty familiar with technology because I learned it at a young age. So I didn't learn any new tech skills, but I think my camera communication, that I wasn't very good at. And now, you know, I can talk through a camera pretty well. 
Yeah, look at you doing podcasting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I knew a lot about technology when I started online school, but I definitely used it as an excuse to get my parents to get me new technology. I got a new mic. Nice. I got a new webcam. Nice. I got a new mouse. It was really quite a good experience for me. Yeah, it's like, Dad, go ahead and let's bump up this broadband access here. Like, I need more better stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he, he got me a, a hardwired connection to our Wi-Fi. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No lag. No <laughs> lag. It's like going, it goes like underneath our house and out and in through my window. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's all cool. Was that, was that legal work? Did your dad just dig it up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it like goes through like our sketchy basement and then yeah. like comes up and it's like chill. Nice, man. Like I think having new tech, like, you know, for students who weren't used to technology, I think this was a good thing for them oh, totally. is having having tech like oh I, now i can use cameras and and i know how to use like zoom and yeah absolutely google meets and all that stuff too but beside good i mean that was some good things there has to be some absolutely terrible terrible things oh there's a oh, lot yeah. of absolutely terrible things i think my list of terrible things outweighs my list of good things yeah i can, I think I can so say too. the same I think here so too. i think one of the things was maybe like social isolation mm. for a lot of kids oh, like you yeah. could mm-hmm. see your friends yeah it was bad for me i again i started my freshman year and i Will and I both went to the same middle school and we went to a really small middle school and only like, I think six kids from my graduating class came to this school and I knew no one in any of my classes. And so I had no friends because I had to like make friends online through like private chats, which was really Mm -hmm. awkward, but also it's impossible to study by yourself. Sometimes you need someone to be like, you're wrong. Wait, here's what we're doing. And we were doing group projects, and I didn't know anybody. It was really awkward. You guys went to the same middle school? Yeah. Yes, we did. Wow, okay. Well, I mean, did you feel isolated from your friends? Uh, I wasn't exactly much of a social kid, but at times, you know, I did hang out with them, and I did talk to them. And it was weird just staying at home for weeks on end and not talking to them because I'm used to talking to them at least a couple times a week, you know? Yeah, we're social creatures. We like to go out and have fun with I, – I don't – I mean, there are people that, that are just like uh, – I mean, there's people in this classroom right now as we speak who just like to stay on their phone the entire time and not talk to other people. Oh, man. oh yeah. <laughs> Too many <laughs> but, of those. But I think we're very social creatures, right? We love to talk. We love to have these conversations with others. And I think having this social isolation was bad for a lot of kids mm-hmm. because, you know, when they came back to school, like the very second distance learning was over, the very first year they came back, it was a fucking madhouse. Kids I- were screaming in the hallways. Like, I, why are you screaming? Like, I don't know. Yeah, the freshmen last year, because I'm a senior now, the freshmen last year were nuts. Yeah. I think there was a big gap in development of their brain during that time because when they're at home and they're not at school, like middle school is an important time of of a student's life, you know. They learn how to socialize. They learn how to do independent work. There's a whole lot of stuff in middle school. (laughs) But yeah. <laughs> that, 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 helps, that helps that helps them it helps them develop you know how to react to that yeah. so if they yeah. get bullied in like when they get a job if they get bullied by a manager or bad coworkers, they know how to deal with it not gonna go cry you know there was a, a like a meme or quote I saw that said uh, your triggers are your responsibility it's not the world's job to tiptoe around you oh yes I saw that you posted yeah. that quote yeah. yeah it's on the wall it's all, is it, all, it should be on the wall yeah. yes it is it, I saw yeah, it. I think it's on the wall and uh I think because of the social isolation, when they came back as freshmen, they didn't know how to react. And you're right. I think in middle school, you miss these very formative years. It's like pre-puberty, starting, beginning puberty phase where people are trying – teenagers, young young teenagers are trying to understand themselves. And they can't. Exactly. They don't know how to navigate it. I entered uh, online learning at the beginning of my seventh grade, I believe, and I ended right at the beginning of my eighth grade. In seventh grade, you know, that's, that's a lot of time, one whole year. Yeah. That is rough. But the kids who came in who were crazy, they they lost the end of their sixth grade year and almost all of their seventh grade year and had a super awkward eighth grade year. So mm. it was like more awkward than what normal middle school is, which yeah. is already super awkward. Yeah, that's like a snowball of effects right mm. there. Well, did you think that we have this increased screen time now? Like we have taught kids that increased screen time is actually good for you because I, th- I think it's bad. But I think because of distance learning, we force kids uh, to be on screen time, and they, I think they really enjoyed it. I honestly hated it. I spent probably 10 plus hours a day just staring at my computer because if it wasn't if it wasn't doing schoolwork or being in class, you couldn't go outside and see your friends. Yeah. And so I like lived on my computer, and it, at some point I was like, this is no longer fun. 
I wish we had like paper printouts or a textbook I could physically read rather than staring at this online screen and doing all of my work online. And now all of our teachers do all of our work online because it's more convenient to not have to have thousands of pieces of paper and it's better for the environment. But also it's kind of like you need to get time out of your screen, but you can't do that if every assignment is online. I see what you mean. Uh, the middle school that we went to, it had very outdoorsy work, mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of farming, a lot of planting. And that was a big part of the school's culture. And when we just switched to doing online work all the time, it was it was a strange, it was a strange jump. But I already did a lot of my work online, but not having any outdoor stuff. And like you said, paperwork or textbook work, it was it was weird and it was uncomfortable. But I wouldn't say it was a, it was bad, at least for me. I think, be, you know, I have an e-reader. I have a Kindle at home. I, I have oh, yeah. all that. But I have also a bookshelf full of books. And I love seeing... Pay, uh, prints on paper. Mm-hmm. I don't. I love this tactile sensation of holding the book, turning pages, and things like that. And I, I, I love. Okay, this is gonna sound really weird. I like the way books smell. Yes, I understand I what love, you mean. That's I true. love book smell. Yeah, a freshly opened book from a brand new library or like a newly printed book. I know exactly what you mean. One of my old student jobs was working at the Honolulu Community College Library, Ooh. and part of my job was to. Um, wipe down the mold off of really old books that we had books from like 1910, 1920. I'm like, well, but my job was to wipe the shelf and then take the symbol green and wipe the mold off the cover of the book. But once in a while I used to, <clears throat> but once in a while I used to crack the, crack the pages and just like take a whiff. Mm. It smells like vanilla. It yeah. smells like vanilla to me. I, I think old books have a really nice smell too. They just, it feels nostalgic a little bit. Yeah. It, I mean, even, okay. So back to distance learning, and, and people are going to think I'm weird now for smelling books. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's like this uh, difficulty staying motivated and focused on distance learning? Absolutely. I had a very big problem with staying motivated. Like like I mentioned earlier, for the first like two weeks, I was blown through it, right? And then I hit a roadblock. Either it was a hard class or I just lost all my energy. And then I would just go back to camera off, mute, playing games. You yeah. know what I mean? I I tried my best to stay motivated. I was thinking, I need to not start my high school career off with a bunch of C's and D's or it's going to ruin me for the rest of my years. But the problem was, was that when you hit a roadblock, it was so hard to get help from other people. Rather than I started, once we came back, you could ask other classmates. Now you're kind of stuck in this position of, I have to figure it out by myself. And that lost me a little bit of motivation. But I tried to work through it and I ended up doing pretty well during distance learning, which I was happy about. It was just, it was so much harder than having a classroom to sit in and just do stuff. Also, like you play video games on the same computer you did school on. Yes, I didn't have a total, Yeah. <laughs> I learned my lesson. It's so distracting. It's so bad to do like the two things that are so separate because all you want to do when you're doing school on your computer that you can play video games on mm. is play video games. Yeah. On my desktop, I had Zoom on one. I had all my school applications on the right side of my desktop, and then I had everything else on the left side. So if I ever went to my desktop, just the whole wall of opportunity to procrastinate. Yeah, let yeah. me let me tell you from a teacher's point of view what I saw. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so I, I see all my students on, on the call, right? And then all of a sudden, you just see their eyes start looking left <laughs> and then or right. And then all of a sudden, they don't look back at the camera. They're staring at something else off camera, and then it's flickering and flashing, mm-hmm. but their eyes are not moving around, they're laser focused. I'm like, oh, they're fucking playing games. <laughs> they're fucking playing games. And I, I get it, man. I get it. Like at one point in time, uh, when we had like this hybrid schedule where even as faculty, we had to meet via via um, WebEx call. At some points, I was so bored with my WebEx call that I put, <laughs> I put a movie on my other monitor. Oh my I'm like, I'm just going to watch this for a little bit. Like until somebody calls my name, I'm going to watch this movie, right? But even when with that comes this increased cheating where, uh, well, even as you said, like things became difficult and, and harder. I think students also saw like the progression of difficulty mm-hmm. and they're like, what the fuck am I doing? Why don't I just Google tab the next tab over and I'll go look up the answer. And, and I thought that was brilliant, kind of brilliant because, well, why, what's the purpose of giving you a, a quiz online where all the answers are there? Because you know, in my class, and I'm not trying to like dog other teachers, but in my class, I allow full open notes. I allow full open internet. Yeah. Because that, that's the real world, right? I'm going to have a problem and I need to Google my problem. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. And I think that's great. And a lot of a lot of the questions on your quizzes, at least in my experience, you can't just Google it and have a straight answer for it. You need to, you know, yeah. think through it, even with Google. 
Yeah, you couldn't just Google that answer. You, you have to think through it, right? Exactly. And yeah. I like that. And I think because of that, we had to make sure that I, I used to tell my coworkers, I'm like, what's the point of you giving these quizzes then? You're just getting mad that they're cheating. Yeah. And I'm like, they're going to do it anyway. So why don't we just have open discussions? That would be better. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just have discussions with kids and then grade them on their discussion? My Spanish teacher, we almost every kid cheated online during our Spanish of tests. Course. And then we came back in person and she's like, you know, you guys' grade dropped so much. How did they drop so much? And I was like, in my head, I was thinking, did you not think that everybody <laughs> was cheating? Because yeah. Spanish is one of those classes that cheating was so, especially yeah. first year, because yeah. it's just a vocab list that you have on our Google Classroom, a quiz that's on a website that doesn't track your tabs mm-hmm. on our own computers where you can't track our tabs. Mm-hmm. So 90% of the class was cheating. Of course. There is rampant cheating. I mean, but like you're right. And as teachers, we see this like, oh, they were straight A. Oh, my God. I, I've gotten this from parents, too. <laughs> like my kid's a straight A kid. I'm like, when? Oh, oh, two years ago. I'm like, you mean distance learning? They're straight A's. So they're straight A's and they come back to school and then kaboom, they fail everything because they cheated on everything. They didn't learn shit. The one class I cheated on the most was our biology class. Yeah. But I actually learned so much because we didn't, my friend and I, we didn't Google the answers. We sat in a call together and worked through the questions because we spent so little time in class that we were still super confused on a lot of the topics. So we'd sit in a call and we would look over the ans- we would look over the questions, be like, okay, what is this asking? How is this asking this question? And how can we figure out this problem? So I learned more about biology through that than what would have happened of me staring at that quiz and not knowing what to do at all which is what I did in most classes because I was like, I don't want to cheat because I want to learn the concepts that I'm supposed to learn so I don't fail out later in high school because if I cheat in geometry, I'm going to fail in algebra too. Yeah, I see what you mean. I'm that type of kid too who like, I would love to just, you know, cheat on all my work. If I don't understand it, then I would love to whip out my phone and Google it. I have have that issue for Spanish, algebra, a lot of my classes, but I'm the type where it's like, it's not satisfactory to just Google it and get that answer. Like what I want to do is I want to Google it and understand it and learn it. So I use like other applications or websites to help me really learn it instead of just get the answer. Yeah. Even as a teacher, like as I'm building a program, like, oh my God, I forgot how to do this. And I've got like notebooks, handwritten notebooks of things I've written. And I, I, I recall looking up an answer online then going through my books, the next, my notebook, the next time, like, oh yeah, I've already looked it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I've already written down the answer, but I have to look it up again. Because coding's coding's hard and I have to look up a lot of things. One of the main problems that we had with distance learning was we didn't realize that a lot of kids had this lack of technology. Like I didn't realize they didn't have uh, internet or they didn't have computers at home. Now, let me tell you a story because why I think that's fucking bullshit. Oh, man. Okay, no, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. At the very start of distance learning, we had this plan where we sent out a Google forum to all the, fa- all the parents and I said, if you need internet and you need a computer, go ahead and fill the form and come by. There'll be, there'll be a pickup day. And so on the pickup day, I remember standing in the parking lot and all of a sudden I see these brand new Toyota Tacoma trucks come in, these brand new SUVs, these brand new cars, paper license plates. And they're driving in and picking up a hotspot that we're paying for. And then we give them a Chromebook on top of that, right? I'm mm. like, what the fuck? <laughs> And so I look at the vice principal at the time. I'm like, Jason, what the hell, man? You don't see what I see? He goes, well, they, they need computers and internet. I'm like, yo, these are brand new trucks. These are brand new SUVs. So they spent their COVID relief money on a down payment for a brand new truck. But you're telling me they can't buy their kid a computer <laughs> or a decent internet for the household. You don't see the problem here. You don't see it because I, I see it. Like they're clearly scamming our system. And then on top of that, I go, you sent out an an email to all the parents and then you got a ton of responses, right? He goes, yeah. Like, okay. When we email parents about other things like graduation or proms or things like that, they never respond to us. But lo and behold, we're offering you free stuff. And then, oh yeah, I'll respond. You bunch of scumbags. (laughs) That's right. Parents that took technology, but bought a brand new SUV, but couldn't afford your own kid stuff. You're a scumbag. That's you. I agree. I agree with that. That's messed up. Especially if it's like other technological stuff as well. Yeah. Like, and I, and as we were, uh, as COVID was ramping, distance learning was ramping down, what happened was we went ahead and then we said, okay, return all the stuff, right? Guess how much we got back? None. Well, we got back most. I'm sorry. Better question. Better question. 
Guess how much was not returned, percentage wise. Twenty five. Close. Close. Thirty three. <laughs> Nearly twenty percent. Oh, so twenty percent of the Chromebooks are still out there and the hotspots. Yeah, we suspended service, but imagine paying for all those devices. We put out. Mm-hmm. I think we gave out what six, seven hundred different devices. Oh, yeah, Jeez. and we're only a school of nearly fourteen hundred. So, and and what I couldn't figure out was as we gave out these hotspots, and, and I'm like, what are these kids doing on the internet? And so I'd open a uh, Go Guardian, and Go Guardian is a piece of software that allows me to monitor a school issued Chromebook. And these kids were looking at the most lecherous things, man. The most like, <laughs> I want you to imagine what a teenager looks at on the computer. Oh God! When the door is closed. And the parents aren't around. And they think yep. they're unmonitored. And they think that that's, so I screenshotted some of them like, here, look what <laughs> these kids are doing. I don't understand why they thought they were unmonitored. Maybe, I, I guess to me, I've always, I never use school computers because yeah. anything you do on school computers, the school right. owns. And so I'm like, this is my stuff. I want it. And what I really didn't understand is when these, par- when these parents couldn't figure out why their kids' internet was cut off. Like, yeah, because your kid's looking at pornography when they should be studying. <laughs> oh, and by the way, and let's talk about a teacher workload here is that when I'm doing my lessons and then all of a sudden I see like this kid's not attending class, I'm like, wait a minute, this kid has our internet hotspot and a Chromebook. What do you mean this kid's not attending class? Like, yeah, I, yeah I, we gave you technology, but you're not coming to school. So now we're on the hook for, I don't know, you have $700 worth of our products, but you don't come to class. Oh, no. Oh, God. Recipe for disaster. Yeah. And so I had this plan. I had this plan. I, I introduced an admin. I said, why don't we go ahead and bring everybody back to school and stick them on the field or stick them on the uh, senior <laughs> patio? Yep. Oh, man. That would have been funny. I would have hated it. Yeah. I mean, but let me ask you this. Uh, did you find that there was a quiet place for you to learn at home? Uh, well, my room is already pretty undisturbed. Me and my parents, we have a nice connection where you knock on the door, you know, I say come in and they open it. And I know a lot of kids, they don't have that kind of privacy, yeah. so I'm lucky to have that. And I could let my father know, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be learning in here, so you just keep it quiet. And I have thick walls in my apartment, so it's not really an issue of being disturbed while I'm learning. It's just me staying focused. That was the hard part. You're like, Dad, shut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, none of that, none of that ever. <laughs> How about you, Piper? For me, I had no problem in my house of it being loud, yeah. but I live in a very noisy neighborhood. Oh. And I have very noisy neighbors. These were my old neighbors. I love them. But they have three little mm-hmm. kids, and they were on distance learning. And so when they got bored, they would just start yelling at me through my window because, <laughs> because their the backyard is, is like this close, to, there is like super close to my window. And they'd just be like, Piper, come play with me. And I'd be like, um, and I would make, and I would like yell back at them that I'm in school. So my house was quiet, but everything around me was really loud. Yeah. Oh my God. It's pretty funny. <laughs> no, I feel bad for some of these kids. Like they live in a place where it's super busy. It's super yeah. noisy. People like to blast their music. Mm. People are fucking out of control mm-hmm. because it, they couldn't leave because it was locked down and distance learning. Yeah, no, it was it was really bad. Like noisy homes are probably one of the worst, um, one of the worst issues. Yeah, you also, it's also kind of embarrassing when you turn on your, you like unmute yourself, and sometimes a car would just like bolt down my street, mm, or like an they ambulance. Loved, that happened a lot during COVID. I think they were bored, yeah. so they would just start like racing down my <laughs> super tiny street. <laughs> Let's just do burnouts. Yeah, or they would be like blasting music from like my other neighbors. So it would just be super loud. And I'd be like, you know, this is like a little too much going on. You know, I wonder how did uh, like classes like PE and culinary handle distance learning? Oh man. What did am you I- guys have those classes? I took PE online over summer. How do you do PE online? It was, t- it was totally asynchronous. It was a hundred percent on the honor code. And we did a lot of <laughs> <laughs> the honor code. And we, we did a lot of reading. So we would read about in my PE class, we'd actually end up reading about like the heart and what cardio does to the heart rather than doing cardio. Okay. So I mean, it's physical you, education. Yeah. You're supposed to work out for six hours a week yeah. every day during like, Six hours a week, every week during the summer, which I did because I do dance, but it was mostly on the honor system. It was your parents had to sign it yeah, and say, yeah, they worked out. Sure. Oh, so, <laughs> man. It's like, sure. Sign this card, dad. I, I definitely worked out. <laughs> well, did you have these classes? No, I did not have any classes. I didn't have any PE or culinary. I wish I had culinary. I've been wanting to get into culinary for a long time. But one of my friends, he had culinary during distance learning. 
He said he hated it. He absolutely hated it. Yeah, how do you do that? Because you would you would just show yourself cooking or you'd show yourself making these things and it was probably on the honor system. Like you would just either show your presented product or you'd show yourself making it. That is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Online classes, they should be more about textbook learning instead. Yeah. But also <laughs> textbook learning sucks. Well, it all sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I think for for me, uh, I, I some of my colleagues really had trouble with distance learning. and But you know what a lot of the problems were? That they were tech illiterates. Mm. Mm, yeah. and, and let me explain what tech illiterate is. Like, they don't know how to start their own class. And the minute they turn their camera on, all you see is like this upshot of their nose. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't, don't remind not, me of like, that. Okay, <laughs> Folks, uh, I want you to imagine, right, your camera's above your laptop. Uh-huh. And then uh, open your laptop lid, then look at your camera. It's staring at your nose. It's like shooting up your nose. And so we'd had a lot of videos where teachers would be like, oh, look at me. I, I'm, I'm doing video distance learning. I'm like, dude, your, your quality sucks. <laughs> we had, in fact, at this school, we had to have a, a professional development where my colleague taught our faculty members how to properly shoot a video. Wow, that's kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I think teachers, especially nowadays, distance learning or not, they need to really be familiar with technology because yeah. all of their students, they're using technology. And if you're with a teacher who doesn't know how to use anything and they're not familiar with like physical learning or they don't like having to write down or read textbooks, teachers need to have that option to switch to something that their students are more familiar with. I went full blast with it. I built an entire recording studio. I bought like cameras. I set them up. Because I figured, look, if you're going to get stuck distance learning, I'm going to give you a show. That, that's, that was my goal. Like my, my students are stuck in this terrible atmosphere. I have to give them a show where they are looking at a production, right? Like you want to see production quality. And I, I want to make sure that you have this good production quality. Yeah. Some of my teachers were very tech illiterate to the point it was really funny I, we were once stuck in a class for 20 minutes where the teacher was deafened and we were all, and they turned off chat. So nobody could tell our teacher that they were deafened. So we just spent 20 minutes of her teaching and us not hearing it. And then her yelling at us when we didn't answer her question. <laughs> like, yeah, and Will, I mean, you told me earlier that you have a lot of, you had some teachers that are willing to participate or give you assignments. Is that true? Yes. Uh, I had about two teachers who uh, were doing the distance learning thing, but they had no energy and they, you can tell they didn't want to do it. Like they would show up to the classes, they'd turn their camera on and they'd be like, okay, welcome back to class. We're going to be, we're going to be doing this. So just open up your thing and then do this. And then they would, they would either mute their mic. I think they were required to have their camera on. So they would have to mute and then they just stand there and they would clearly, like you said earlier, they would just be doing something off screen, whether it be on their phone or their other monitor, whatever. Jesus. Like I, I, I feel bad because these teachers really need to understand, like, if you don't put on a good show, your students will also phase out, right? Like, oh, yeah. you're the audience. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the host uh, in the sense of distance learning, right? I'm, I'm giving you this, this, this production broadcast. You need to watch it. And if you're forced to watch it, I might as well step it up. Yeah, absolutely. The teacher-student connection in physical and distance learning, it's super important to just how everybody's energy is. Like, it can make the teacher's day, like, any teacher will tell you when they have a good class of students, you know, it always made they're happy to come to work and they're just happy in general. We had this teacher here who used to look into the screen, the, the sea of students, and she would look out and pick on kids. She's like, are you poor? What? what? Are you are you in poverty? Holy sh- what? Because the kid's background was all jacked up, right? Like it, it just looked really, what if, for whatever reason... Like the kid's background, the room was messy or the, like there's nothing and there's people running around or like, like how do you look at somebody's video and go, are you poor? Are you fucking yeah, idiot? Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, what the hell? so screwed up. You're the, uh, you're, the uh, you're the teacher and you're calling a kid out in front of all the other people saying you're poor because your house looks like shit in the back. Yeah, if I was in that situation, I would turn my camera off and never turn it on again. If they asked yeah. me to do it, I'm just be like, sorry, am I too poor to show my video to you? I should, you should just hit record and be like, say that again. <laughs> say that again so I can send it to the principal. Like, what the fuck, right? Mm-hmm. That is some bullshit. It's why kids didn't want to turn their cameras on in their houses. Yeah, yeah. There, there, do you guys remember, by the way, uh, there was a student who was very intelligent last year. I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to say, let's just say uh, uh, Jeremy. Do you, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not, Sorry, that was very vague. There's a lot of So he students. was a very loud kid. In our classroom, he was very loud, but he was very smart. 
graduated oh, last yeah. year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, man. And so uh, he used to like jump on distance learning all the time. And, uh, and I felt a little bad because I, I kept seeing like in the background of his video that his drawers were open and all his clothes were pouring out. Oh. And then he had like baskets of clothes. Um, and in my head, I'm thinking like, hey, man, can you like fucking like do some laundry and just <laughs> shit away? But I want to say it out loud. Yeah. At some point, I got tired of keeping my room super clean. So yeah. I grabbed like a foldable screen and put it up behind yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> because then it looked nice. My yeah. room didn't have to be spotless. And I could just exist without feeling like people were judging the fact that my room was kind of a disaster. Yeah. I just put myself up against a blank white wall. So it would just be me and, me and the camera. Done. Easy. Yep. Done and easy. Don't got to do shit. All right, let's uh, let's close out with a couple of questions. Are you ready? Oh yeah. All right, I have a first question for you. I have three questions. Oh, the first question is: Would you go back to distance learning? Why or why not? Who would like to take that one first? I think I'll give that to you, Pepper. Never. I would never want to do this again. I hated it. I I had the opportunity to take AP Physics online. The second it was like this is going to be an online class where you're going to be super self directed doing online school. I thought there's no way. I like having an instructor. I like being able to get to know my classmates and know my instructor. I don't want to sit on a computer for another three hours a day just to do one class. And my answer to that question, it's very similar. I would also never want to go back to distance learning. As accessible as it is, it loses out on so much opportunity for experiments. And I was raised on hands-on work. I love hands-on work. I love doing things to learn them. And just by reading an online document or by completing some ed puzzle, it does not help. And on top of the motivation killer, just no, I would never go back to that. All right. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever go back to that again. I, I fucking hated it. Glad we can all I agree mean, on I, that. I liked it because it helped teach me how to build a studio. And I think we all benefit from it now. Oh, yeah. oh of course. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I, other than that, I would never go back to that. All right. Uh, second question. Do you think students have a positive or negative view of distance learning? I think kids who cheated and succeeded off of cheating have a very positive and who hate school <laughs> had a very positive view on distance learning. I love school. I love going to classes. I love being challenged. I think that kids like that, kids who are in classes with me, like these AP classes had no benefit from doing distance learning and wouldn't want to do it again. Yeah. I, I also like it really, it really depends on the student, you know, like, like Piper said, if you ask a student who cheated, hates school, they're going to love it. But students like who like hands on work, like having an instructor, they, you know, they're not going to like it. They're going to want to be in person. I want to be in person. I'm not the smartest guy, so I'm not taking AP, AP classes, but I still enjoy all my classes. I enjoy learning hands on. And I, I uh, loved it. I, I would see it as you're right, because the kids that like to cheat, they don't want to be around you anyway. But I love seeing students. I, I prefer a more personal touch anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, final question. Uh, and this is actually for you thinking about your parents. How do parents ultimately feel about distance learning? Well, my mom actually teaches at the university here. And she teaches a distance learning class. And she also teaches an in-person class. I know she prefers teaching in person. But teaching online allows her to teach students who are in the other parts of the state, which in, are far away. And my dad, my dad loves being online because he plays Pokemon on his tablet during four hour long meetings. See, adults do that shit too. Wow. Yeah, he has like four hour long business meetings where he's, he's the photographer. So he's not part of yeah. the conversation. So he just plays on the tablet and enjoys life. I think parents as a whole, once they get their students set up with like whatever technology they need, like a camera, a good mic then I think they'll like it because, you know, they don't have to take their students out yeah. to like drive on a really long drive to school. And my dad in specific, like my dad specifically, he drives me out to school out of courtesy. I only live like 10 minutes away and he liked the distance learning. He really liked it because he was like, yeah, I can sleep in until 11 p.m. when I'm when I'm on my off day. I don't have to drive you to school. <laughs> nice. That's the same thing with my parents. No more 45 minute commute to school for no reason for them because they just go straight back home. But the bus takes like two hours to get here. Oh, God. Well, Piper and Will, I want to thank you very much for being part of today's show. And if you love this show, you can check out more episodes on the Anointed All podcast here on Spotify and find us on iTunes. And you can also find Will Wonders and Judgment Time also on Spotify and, and iTunes and all the great places where podcasts are found. I want to thank you very much for listening to today's episode. And if you have questions, feel free to leave us a note. Until next time, I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you very much. Mr. All right. Thank you for listening.